Good evening, uh, welcome to my channel. And I'm back, uh, merely a week later, with another story. Uh, so, I do seem to have got back into the swing of things with this random word, malarkey. Um, anyway, so today's story is, I think, number 131. And it's uh, quite short, and it's based on the following five random words. Okay, so here is Shoot the Messenger. I'm not sure what first made me wary of the envelope. I suppose there were several competing factors, even before I picked it up. The scrawled handwriting, the lack of a stamp or postmark, the fact that it was addressed to the red-headed bloke in the citizen's advice. Then the strange way it appeared on my desk, put there by a cleaner that the sender had met in the foyer of the five-storey building where our office and several businesses are co-located. I only discovered that little detail much later, of course. Really what prompted my hasty call to the authorities was the ticking. Okay, not ticking in the old-fashioned wristwatch sense, more that when I held it to my ear and tilted it from side to side, it made a distinct clicking sound. The envelope was suspiciously light and oddly thick in the middle, as if something was carefully positioned by the easy open flap, a mechanism. We have to be wary in my game. There was a young woman in the Citizens Advice Bureau in Worcester who got sent a handkerchief soaked in arsenic. She was in hospital for weeks. We're here to help people, but when we're unable to, or when they simply don't like the honest truth we dole out, things can quickly go south. When I started working here in the sterile new build office complex off Edinburgh's Abbey Hill, I thought people would find it refreshing to be told the absolute truth for once, rather than be fobbed off by companies or explicitly lied to by politicians and civil servants. They don't. People only want to hear the truth it's kind or reassuring to hear. They don't like to discover that the council does indeed have the right to stop their benefits, or that they can't sue their neighbour for parking a minibus outside the front door. And even the mildest looking South Korean lady can get decidedly nasty when she's told that one more failed visit from the food hygiene inspector will result in the loss of her trading license. Here, shoot the messenger, should be our motto, I used to joke. It doesn't seem funny now that the local bomb squad are about to do a controlled explosion in a reinforced steel box in our car park. Do you have any idea who uh, sent you this? asked the rather fetching young police constable, Brian Cavendish. Do you have any enemies? I laugh, but his dour expression invites no further levity. I run through the last few days' unsatisfactory encounters as we are asked to refer to them in HR meetings. Could it be the Punjabi shopkeeper with a compulsory purchase order he can do nothing about? Maybe it's the single mum who's no longer eligible for the local food bank because her third job pushes her earnings over a certain threshold. I suppose there's an outside chance it's the young man who came in to ask where he could hire an electric bicycle, to whom I rather flippantly replied, I don't know, perhaps Google it? They've cleared the car park in the office. Everyone's been forced to repark their vehicles on the main road. That's hardly likely to raise our popularity. The locals for two whole blocks in every direction have been evacuated. The six full-time advisors in our office are craning over the shoulders of the officers using a remote camera to look inside the tempered steel container while the charge is laid by a robot which resembles something from a wacky 80s kids movie. PC Cavendish whispers, We call him number five, you know, from Short Circuit. I wonder how a man in his late 20s can possibly know that reference while my gaydar flickers and dies. As he leans over, I spot a chunky neck chain that's very déclassé and blocky scuffed Clark's footwear. What a shame, I think, my wistfulness interrupted by a muffled thud within the upturned skip-like container, and from the tinny speakers in the PC's PC. The controlled explosion lifts the container by a couple of inches on one side, enough to release a cloud of pink and red confetti hearts. As the four bomb squad officers cower behind the police cordon tape, it's in that moment that I remember Billy. Probably about 30 years old, a little Asperger's, I suspect. He owns a gift and novelty shop on Leith Walk, but hasn't been able to pay his rent for seven months, in part due to after effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and, to be honest, mostly due to his financial incompetence. I spent the best part of an hour explaining the process of commercial evictions, his rights as a tenant, bankruptcy procedures, local bylaws, which seemed written to deliberately confuse, and the intricate court procedures to come. I finished by saying that he'd probably have until New Year to vacate the premises he'd almost certainly lose when the bailiffs came. Billy grew increasingly crestfallen during our talk, but his frustration took the form of shrinking into himself, becoming quieter and wrapping his arms around his body. He'd thanked me when he left, but perhaps there had been a seething rage in Billy too. Maybe my gran was right, and it really is the quiet ones you have to watch. A few minutes later, a female officer comes over, clutching something encased within a transparent Ziploc bag, a letter the bottom of which has been scorched through by the explosives. Signature's burned off, if there ever was one, says the officer. But we couldn't find any explosive device, or anything else of concern, just a lot of glitter, and one of those novelty devices that fires it out. She's smiling wryly, but PC Cavendish seems immune to humour. Bloody waste of time, he mutters, before catching himself and turning to me. No, you did the right thing, sir. Better to be safe. He doesn't completely cliché. I'm already sorry when I read what Billy has written, there in spidery silver ink on the blood-red paper. Thanks for being real with me. Nobody else ever is. Love, B. There's a dash to indicate the rest of the letters are missing. Anyway, um, that is my little story. Um prompted by those words and I hope you liked it if you did you could share it you could hit the like button hit the subscribe button which is somewhere up there the funny little logo thing and maybe watch another one and maybe this channel can grow yet it's possible one never knows and now I shall leave you farewell <laughs>